Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props and this is gonna be a really fun video because we are going to be assembling and painting this just incredibly detailed and textured Moon Knight helmet uh, and these crescent darts. Now all these files are over on my website, 3dprintedprops.com. There is a coupon code below in the description, but the detail in this helmet is incredible. And it was so much fun to paint because there was no taping, there was no nothing. I really had fun doing multiple dry brushes with different colors to really build up the tones and the depth in this texture. And I am super, super happy with how it turned out. So let's go ahead behind the fake wall and I'll walk you through all the steps I did to make this helmet look as cool as it does. Okay, so here it is, the Moon Knight helmet and a detail incredible on this. Now I printed this with my Piapoli Phenon L. It comes in a couple different pieces and you also get the cowl in three pieces for easy printing. Now again, I did print this on my resin printer. I really wanted to get this incredible detail. You can see with the bandages and whatnot, but I have seen it printed uh, on a standard FDM printer and the detail holds up because it's just really done so well. Now, I'm going to do some sanding, so I, of course, put on my mask because resin is very fine. If you're going to be sanding PLA or something like that, you still want to wear a mask. But I'm not going crazy with this. I'm not being really aggressive, even though it looks it sped up like that, because I don't want to get rid of this detail. But I want to hit it with some sandpaper uh, or a sponge here so that it takes the primer well. And there are a few places on it where, of course, there are supports, uh, little uh, things that I want to get rid of. So now we're going to start doing some gluing up, and I used Bob's Super Glue. I love that stuff. With this accelerator, it helps sets it fast. So I get things as lined up as I can. I give everything a little squirt, and then I hit the back part. It's easier to do it in two parts. This way, you're not trying to make all the lines line up perfectly right off the bat. And guess what? They're not going to because, you know, we're printing, and some things shift, some things move, and everything's going to be a little bit off again like right back here be just because of printer tolerances and whatnot but we're going to fix that later on now the first thing i'm going to do is just take a little bit off with sandpaper again you don't want to go crazy because you're going to lose this detail i tried something different here this is just some joint compound because i wanted to try something with a brush i'll show you in a few minutes so i sort of work it in with my fingers i'm wearing gloves because uh, you know the stuff you never know and I'm going to take it down a little bit with sandpaper, again, being very careful on the actual model not to lose a lot of that detail. And you can probably see here uh, there are some cracks and crevices we need to get into. I love these files. And again, if you're interested in you know all the things I'm using for this, uh, they're in the description below. Now, it looks pretty messy, so I'm going to wash it and hit it with some primer. And I had an idea here. I took some of that joint compound and I put it on a chip brush and I cut the chip brush and I'm brushing it in here to sort of try to mimic the lines that uh, you get with the actual model. And I thought this would really help obfuscate any of the sort of layer lines and where it's smoothed out. And overall, I, you know, I was really happy with the idea. Uh, I got the idea from, you know, like a ceiling, how you would, people would plaster ceilings and do designs on it. Then I figured I got a little crazy and I used a file just to sort of cut into them a little bit too after I pri reprimed it and give it a little bit more of a cut in feeling. Now it's time to wash everything. You can see the cracks and crevices get filled up with the, you know, sanding material. So I wash everything with like a toothbrush. While things were drying, I did a test to see what I liked. And I liked the color that had a little bit of tan in it. So I mixed up uh, some white, some black, and this sort of bone color that I really like. And these are just, again, basic paints, basic acrylics. And uh, the, they, the products are in the description below. They are affiliate links. And what I'm going to do now is I'm literally going to do this whole helmet sort of dry brushing it. So I don't have a lot of paint on the brush. I'm not sort of working it into the cracks. You can see I'm just sort of lightly sort of wisping over it because I don't want it to fill in the spaces. And of course, I'm a little, uh, you know, wanting to get this thing done. So I'm using a hairdryer to dry it off. 
Now I'm going in with a white, and again, I have very little uh, paint on the brush, and I'm just sort of skating it across it, so A, it doesn't cover up the gray, that's the base, and it also doesn't cover up the the next layer of gray I had put on. And, you, and then I'm just sort of going through all the little areas in between here, the cracks and crevices, and I'm adding like a brownish tan to it for sand and just for dirt, just to give it some depth. And lastly, I'm just going through in the real sort of the deepest cracks of the bandages with just a black to really, uh, with, uh, with some water in it, to really help define the separate and separate these bandages. Again, light layers, dry brushing to keep all of that detail. So for his mummy skin, I just pretty much use the straight sort of bone color. It's like a, it's, it's an off white. I really like this color. And then I use a white again dry brushing it and I'm just skating over the the model and you can see how that really hits the highlights and shows how much texture is in this. If I was going with heavy paint it would just go into those areas and cover it up. Now I darken the eyes up again dry brushing very little paint on there just to sort of make those little look a little bit more sunken in and when I put LEDs in here really help really sort of make that pop. And then I'm adding some grays and blacks into the cracks and crevices where I know uh, it really needs to be dirtier. And now it is LED time. So these are just some simple LED panels. Again, links below. I like to hit, hit them with a little bit of a, the heat gun here. Be careful, these get hot. And then I can sort of bend them so they have sort of a crescent to them, so they fit in the helmet. And I just put them in with a lot of glue gun, just like a stick of glue. Little Velcro, I put the battery pack in, and then you can just easily turn it on, and you can just see how sharp these things look. Now, I'm not going to be wearing this helmet. I'm literally just doing a display, so I didn't bother taking the white part out that makes it so you can see. You couldn't really see through this thing right now. Now, we are just going to go ahead and work on the cowl. This is almost, a, it's a pretty much a repeat of what I did with the mask. Uh, I started with the same base gray. I put on a little bit of that beige. Uh, I put on some more white. And I just kept going through and built the color up. Again, if at one point you're like, mm, I'm not sure how this looks, give it time. You're building the color. And when you're dry brushing, you're just putting such little bits of paint on here and there, you can really go through and fix it if you have to. Again, we're doing some of the weathering uh, and then adding the pure black with just a little bit of water in there to really sort of where it would get dirty. Makes sense, right? The, the cracks, the crevices, the seams, uh, these little arrow area, areas here and it really helps make it look like it's a really, it's a thing that's really been worn. Now let's work on the crescent blades. Uh, I really love how these things turned out and I poked myself quite a bit with them. They're very sharp actually. Uh, again, put your mask on and I'm just gonna take down uh, where the supports were and then go every, over everything with like a 220 grit sandpaper. Uh, again, be careful here in the details. You don't wanna go too crazy cause then you know, you're gonna lose all those cool carvings. Of course, they get really sandy, wash them in soap and water before you prime them and paint them. This is just a rattle can of, uh, I think it's uh, got a, a bronze color from Rust-Oleum, again, links below. And then we go ahead and do some weathering, and this is just that bronze color with black, and I'm just smearing it around and wiping it off with a cloth, and you really get this cool metallic shine, but with that aged look. So, like I said, I'm not going to be wearing this. I'm going to be making a display. So I built a simple little base out of some scrap wood I had, and I found a sheet, and I spray-painted it, some gray and some black and some tan, and I put the helmet on here, the face shell, I guess it would be, and sort of built it out and liked how it looked and went ahead and tried out the cowl. And then I got it all dressed up and took some pretty cool pictures, and I am incredibly happy with how this thing turned out. The texture on this model is probably, you know, I've seen a lot of these out there, and I'm gonna say it, the texture on this thing is incredible. I, I just love it, I loved working on it, I loved painting it. The, the different techniques you can use to really make this thing stand out is just incredible. And this was just, just, I had such a great time doing it because it wasn't like I'm taping things, I'm doing all kinds of 
you know, technical things with spray paint. I was just painting and being creative and really, really dug how this thing turned out. So not only is this helmet and the darts available over on 3dprinterprops.com, my site, uh, again, coupon code below, but I also have an amazingly textured, which I'm working on also for a video, Mr. Knight sort of mask or helmet, I guess you would call it. Uh, and we're also going to have all the other sort of Moon Knight accoutrement. We're going to have the the staff. I'm working on uh, Ethan Hawke's cane, you know, that sort of he uses to judge you. Uh, you name the little piece part, the scarab. We're going to have it over on the site. And if you're thinking of something from the show that you haven't seen anywhere or you just like to see on my site, go ahead and add that to the description below as well. This was super fun. I had a blast doing it. I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you did, please click like and subscribe. Helps YouTube, you know, get our videos out and helps people find them. I enjoy doing them and I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Take it easy, have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.